diamond in a coal Murano, I know it's serious. Girlfriend in a coal Murano, I know it's really serious. There were times when I could have murdered her. Hi guys, this is How to Play Girlfriend in a Coma by The Smiths. This uses three chords, D major and A major and your G major. Um, this one's fairly straightforward because we haven't got that G to D change and um, it's the, basically that same chord progression repeated for the whole song. So you should find this one pretty straightforward. Though the changes are quick and I would like us to use down and up strumming all the time through this one, that would be really great. So we've got um, two beats of your D major chord. So if we started off playing on the beat, we'd do that one with two strums. So three, four, strum, strum. And then straight to your A chord, A major, for two strums. And that's your first bar. And then G for two strums. G, G. And finally, your A major chord, A, A, again. So we're kind of passing through the A chord um, every, every time we, we do this chord sequence. So let's go from the top one more time. One strum of each chord to start off with, nice and slow. D major, two, three, four. D, straight to an A. Your new G chord, and then A. D, A, G, and A. And um, if you're struggling to kind of remember these chord sequences and, and maybe these chords get jumbled up in your mind and you need a better way to remember them rather than just um, thinking of the letters, which is actually a, not the best way to do it. If you're remembering chord sequences and you're thinking, okay, D, A, G, A, and you're maybe trying to make a word out of them or anything like that, you're just visualizing a letter, that's an um, ineffective way for most people to me memorize these chord sequences. What you want to try and do is memorize them on your fretboard. Measure, um, memorize them visually. Measure, memorize the shapes that your fingers make and where they travel. So you start off on a D major chord, which is quite low, and then you come straight up to your A major chord, and that's kind of in, in the middle. It uses the middle strings and it's quite far this way. And then uh, your last chord is the G, which is probably the chord closest to you that we know at the moment, that we've covered in this beginner's course. And then we're back to the A, which is quite far that way. So um, you kind of travel in, I don't know, I guess a kind of C shape, your, your fingers. Uh, and if you can think of chord sequences like that, they should be a whole lot easier to remember. Some people, that method doesn't work as well, but for the vast majority, it does. So if you're one of those people, I hope that helps for you. Let's try and play through this chord sequence, strumming on every beat. So two strums per each chord. From the top, two, three, four. D, A, G, and A. From the top, D, A, G, one more time, D, G, and back to A again. I'll say the right chords next time. <laughs> G, finally A, end on your D. Great stuff. If you end on the chord that you start your chord sequence with, it will tend to sound finish as well. It's another cool tip. So we've started on a D this time. If we end on the D, Kind of sounds like it's resolved, it kind of sounds like it's finished. If we ended on the G or the A, it kind of sounds like it wants to keep going, so that's a cool little thing to know. Um, great stuff, right, that's a little bit slower than the record, so we're just going to try that same thing again, but speed it up very slightly. So join in with me again one more time, from the D in two, three, four. D, three, four, one, two. 
Everything on a down strum. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. End on the D. Finish there. Cool. So that's about up to the tempo of the record there. You can try that along to the record. It will sound absolutely fine. Um, what is best to do, if, if we can use downs and up strumming, it will sound really cool and really natural. For example, one and two and three and four and would be for one bar. So we have one and two and, down, up, down, up, for each chord. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now obviously that's a lot of chord changes with a lot of strums happening at the same time, kind of a lot of plates spinning in the air. How do we cope with it? The best um, idea with eight strumming is always to actually lift off from each chord on your last up strum. So essentially you're going to be playing this chord, which sounds terrible on its own, okay, because uh, we're using open tuning and it, it sounds shocking. Um, but what I, it sounds absolutely fine within a chord sequence. Down, up, down, up. So then I'm purposefully lifting off of all my strings um, on that last upstroke. One and two and three and four and one. If I stay on it like that, it sounds terrible, but within a chord sequence up to speed, it actually it creates a bit of movement and it, it creates a feel and a, a rhythm that sounds pleasant. We actually use it to create a creative effect, I guess. Um, so if you can get that kind of coordination, of course if you can change quickly enough to go straight to it, that will sound great as well, but if you can master this, some of the higher level stuff like we got Wonderwall at the end of this course and, and things like that, to be able to do those kind of riffs, especially on acoustic guitar, you want to be able to master when you lift off of your chords rather than just doing it as fast as you can. You do it at a specific time which helps the rhythm. So um, from the top we're downs and up strumming and let's just see what happens, see if you can do it, okay? So downs and ups, all the chords in this chord sequence, two, three, four. Down, up, down, up, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, down, up, down, up, down, up. One more time. End on your D and Okie dokie, if you can do it along to that then that's great. I'm just going to do that one more time a little bit slower just in case you struggled with it because as I said there's an awful lot of different things happening here. Um, if you want to, if you really struggle with this one, try any of my songs that have um, downs and upstrokes in it. The first song we ever did which was For What It's Worth by B Buffalo Springfield in my absolute beginner's first lesson Actually, you can do this downs and up strumming with it, and it's got this su two super easy chords, just E and A, and um, that can really help you just, just to get downs and ups working, to get this strumming pattern acquired. Because you're either going to use, for any strumming pattern, downs and ups, or all downs. So this is one of, you know, like half of the songs you will ever go to, it's going to use this down and up strumming pattern or a variation on it, so uh, it's a good idea to get. But downs and ups from the top, Two and three and four and down. One, two, three, four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. End on the D. Beautiful, so there you can really hear that kind of open chord, totally open strings, but it sounds fine in context of a strumming pattern and in a song. Uh, we've got our capo on the fifth fret to be able to play this one along to the record. Um, if you haven't got a capo with you, everything we've just done still works totally fine, it just sounds a little bit. So we got a D, A, G and A.
It's just a little lower when we don't have that capo on because the capo makes it kind of sound a bit ukulele-ish, a bit jangly, a bit more Johnny Ma. But um, without a capo... And the melody would be... Girlfriend in a cover, I know I know it's really serious Works absolutely fine, it simply means you can't play it along to the record because it will sound too low but you can sing along on your own, you can sing along with your friends it will still work at parties when you've got a guitar but you haven't got your capo with you you can still do this song, it's absolutely fine but to do it along to the record um, we've got that capo on 5th fret and it sounds like that, it sounds a little, a little higher. Thanks for checking out this video, do check out the other um, songs in this sequence of 10 songs with just these 3 chords, so now you've learnt this one you may as well have a go at the others. If you like this video please give us a, th a thumbs up and subscribe um, so that will make you more of these videos and hopefully I'll see you again.